intro. Oi, hello guys, this is your host, Absurd Pictures, and today we'll be taking a look at a new piece of gear that I've acquired, the GoPro Hero 4 Black. And without further ado, let's just head straight into unboxing. This bitch is a silver! Change of plans, I guess we'll be reviewing the GoPro Hero 4 Silver. Some may call this misleading advertisement, I call this a golden opportunity. Maybe a scam, but definitely a good example of human error. Visual differences. To be honest with you, even though I ordered a different model, this camera didn't quite disappoint me either. It is almost identical in size, shape and weight when compared to the black version of the same camera. There's only one visual difference between them, with which you can instantly tell which camera is which. As you can guess, it's the screen. GoPro Hero 4 Silver has a touchscreen, despite being a slightly weaker model compared to the GoPro Hero 4 Black. The screen is a huge help when it comes to framing your shot or changing the settings. If you wish to turn off the screen to save power or for any other reason, there's a small button on the lower left corner of the camera which serves that function. Video slash photo. There aren't many technical differences between these two cameras either despite GoPro Hero 4 Black having doubled the frame rate in pretty much every recording mode when compared to the silver version. Both can record at 1080p, 1440p, 2.7K and 4K respectively. This camera is also capable of taking 12 megapixel photos. I mean, they're alright, I guess. They have the same sensor, the same ProTune settings, even the built-in microphones are the same. Although if you want to use a high-end external studio microphone, it's only possible on the black version because it is a built-in, high-quality, analog-to-digital converter. Again, that won't work on the silver, but you can use separate audio recording devices anyways. Audio. While we are on the topic of audio, let's do a quick audio test. This is the audio on my phone microphone, this is the audio on my Panasonic Lumix G7, and this is the audio on my GoPro Hero 4 Silver, without the housing. And now with the waterproof housing. Low light. I went out with my friend to do a low light performance test, and I must say, it did well. Had no issues with it, and as you can see, there's not a lot of noise, which really helps a lot if you want to deliver a clean and well lit shot. There's a small detail I want to add, of course I can't test it, but whilst I was researching this topic, I stumbled upon these two guys who also made a similar review and in it they made a low light test with both cameras and the silver came out on top, surprisingly. Waterproof housing. I have mentioned the waterproof housing before in this video and this one can keep your camera functional and dry at depths of 40 meters. Of course, these aren't 40 meters, but pretend they are. Webcam. Just like with the Lumux, you can in theory use this camera as a webcam, but it's a little more complicated this time around. Lumux required a simple micro USB cable, where this GoPro requires an HDMI to USB video capture device, which I don't own and don't plan on purchasing. The GoPro app. GoPro also has a free app from which you can change your camera's settings and control it from a distance. Review your videos slash photos and edit them. The app's name is GoPro Quick Video plus Photo Editor. The delay on this app is very small and I could honestly see myself using this when I will be filming something. It's very nice. Actually, the app is very, very convenient. Accessories. This GoPro, in the same way as the other models, has a lot of different accessories. Housings, tripods, grips, mounts, and the black version even has a separate LCD screen as an accessory, which you can use by plugging it into this port right here. Out of all those, I've got a three-way stick that serves both as a selfie stick with a long folding arm and also a tripod. Battery life. To be honest, I don't think the battery life is too different on both models. 
I've seen numerous tests and the difference was so small it's basically not even worth considering. Of course they used the same battery and I could rate its life about 1 hour in perfect conditions and about 30 minutes of filming in the cold, but it can survive way more when it's on standby mode. I can almost hear you asking, but absurd pictures, won't this LCD drain too much battery on the silver? Well, I can guarantee that you shooting 4K 30fps videos will drain the same amount of battery on your camera as this LCD drains the battery on mine. Conclusion. Now which camera should you buy? One offers an LCD and the other one offers 4K 30fps and pretty much doubled frame rate in every other video recording mode. It honestly depends on what you want to do with the camera. If you want to film 4K 30fps videos in good quality or you want to film slow-mo videos, I go for it. Buy the black version. If you don't necessarily need the doubled frame rate and 4K isn't a primary concern, then the silver is more than qualified for this job. The LCD is very convenient and easy to use and that's important if you want to buy this as a gift for someone. The funny thing is I still have the chance to return this camera to the pawn shop from which I ordered it, but you know what? I am not gonna be filming 4K videos. I'm already used to the touchscreen and the 1080p 60fps looks good enough. I choose the silver. Which camera do you choose? Write in the comments. I hope I've helped you choose your camera. Now thank you for watching, this was your host, and as always, stay fresh. Did I... did I good... did I do good? Yeah, I know, the channel statistics, they haven't been the best lately. But that's only temporary, I, I promise. I can film videos, I can film good videos, I can get you views, I can... Uh, I, I can, I can be of use, please don't replace me like you did with the guy who filmed the Sony review. I can help you if you're a plan, please! <laughs>